Hi educators, I'm here at the State Historical Society of Iowa to show educators the importance of using primary and secondary sources in their social studies classroom. Primary sources are the raw materials of history, the first-hand testimony or direct evidence left behind and created by participants, witnesses, or recorders who were present at and experienced the events being documented. Some examples of primary sources include autobiographies and memoirs, diaries, oral histories, letters and other correspondence, first-hand newspapers and magazines, legal cases, treaties, original works of art, photographs, films, postcards, and even posters. Secondary sources are materials that digest, analyze, evaluate, and interpret information contained within primary sources or other secondary sources. Some examples of secondary sources are biographies, textbooks, encyclopedias, dictionaries, articles and commentaries, criticism of works of literature, art, and music. Both primary and secondary sources help students relate in a personal way to events of the past and promote a deeper understanding of history as a series of human events. Because primary sources are incomplete snippets of history, each one represents a mystery that students can only explore further by finding new pieces of evidence, with the secondary sources trying to piece them together. The question remains, why should you use primary and secondary sources in your classroom? Let's take a look. Primary sources are documented evidence of history. They help researchers and scholars identify patterns that might otherwise be difficult to discern based on present events alone. Educators can use primary and secondary sources to provide additional context during lessons and to encourage students to think critically about significant events, both past and present. Primary and secondary sources unlock diverse historical perspectives. Primary sources are useful for examining history and society on a deeper level, shifting beyond the mainstream to help scholars study the diversity of the human experience. Primary sources help students develop critical thinking skills. Who created this source? Why? When? These are just a few questions students might grapple with when viewing a primary source. Inquiry and reflection are necessary when evaluating primary sources and are incredibly important exercises for helping students strengthen their critical thinking skills. Studying primary and secondary sources can help students to become better citizens. Studying the past supports good citizenship, which is a requisite for a fair and effective democracy. Primary sources enable students to explore the documentary evidence of a nation's history, value systems, and role on the world stage. Thankfully, Digital platforms widen access to primary and secondary sources. Thanks to technology, sources are becoming easier to access and examine. Digitizing sources is essential to their preservation and enables better access, ensuring students aren't limited by factors such as geographic location when conducting research. Let's hear from a few teachers on why they feel using primary and secondary sources is beneficial in their classroom. Working with children um, of any age, uh, primary sources are most effective and more, um, they are going to, to make that impression on the children's learning more than something that might be a secondary source. Um, with uh, exploring in our inquiry-based programs, even children at young as age of two, all the way up to that early childhood or even up to high school, um, getting as many uh, real artifacts and experts into the classroom when you're exploring has the greater effect. Primary sources are the, the essentials, if you will, the building blocks of whatever we're studying in history, whatever it might be, whether it's the American Revolution, World War I, uh, you name it, women's movement, the primary sources are the original texts which help us to understand what is so important about these events, how we can better understand the points of view of the people, the participants. And then the secondary sources allow us to interpret or to get a better understanding of how people interpret those documents. And after all, history is in many respects about interpretation. It never just speaks for itself. We have to take those documents and interpret them, and that's what secondary sources can do for us. As you can see, using primary and secondary sources in your classroom can help your students go to the next level.